Hello, this is Jeff with the Click Team, and today we're going to be building a game in less than five minutes. So I better get to work here. And I need to bring up our library toolbar. Okay, and I'm going to do a new application. And I'm going to open up frame number one. And an application is just a series of frames. You can have as many of those as you needed. And let's get us some objects here. And we're going to be making a simple breakout game. There's a player, a ball, and we need a brick, don't we? Yes. Okay, now these are just standard objects, as you see in this list here. And if you add any of these to your frame, all of those functions feed into the menus you will see. And for example, here's an active object. And that's the basic object in the program. And our player is actually an active object, and it just has some graphics attached to it. And you can import in all of the common file formats. You can use the existing drawing tools in here to draw your animations. So I don't want you to think you're limited to these graphics. You can import in anything. And these are just pre-made graphics. And so let's select our player and go into the movement tab and give it a mouse controlled movement. And I'm going to edit this. And this is simply just defining the zone that the player can move around in. That looks about good. I'm going to close our library here so we have a little bit more room. Click on our ball and give it a bouncing ball movement. And I'm going to make the starting directions pick one of these five, make it a little bit more fair. The ball will be heading up when our game starts. And let's duplicate our brick. Four rows of 15. Let's try that again. Duplicate four rows of 15. All right, that looks better. Okay, so if we run our game now, our player's moving around with the mouse. The ball flew off the screen. And not much game action going on here yet. So let's go over to the event editor. And the event editor is just a series of events which have conditions. When those are true, any actions we place under our objects will be executed. As you add objects to the frame, they automatically appear in here, and they automatically appear in all the menus. So I'm just going to click, and I want to test for when the ball collides with another object, and that would be our player. Now, when this is true, I want our ball to bounce. And when the ball collides with another object, the brick, well, I want the ball to bounce, and I want our brick to destroy. Now, we need to keep the ball in the play field, so I'm going to test the position of the ball and go for the tops and the sides, and that will also be a bounce. I'm just going to drag and drop that down. You can drag and drop in here. You can drag and drop over here. You can just drag and drop everywhere. Now, we also need some score, so under our player, I'm just going to add to the score 25. Now, back over to our frame. We don't have anything displaying our score. So let's insert an object. And I'll just go into our game group and grab the built-in score display. Stick it up there in the corner. OK, let's run our game. And in just however long that was, three minutes, four minutes, we have a game keeping score. Now, our ball went off the bottom of the screen. Let's address that fact and test the position of the ball and off the bottom. When that's true, let's destroy our ball and then let's create a new ball. And I'm going to create that right about in the middle. So if we run our game now, we get a new ball every time one goes off the bottom. So that's how easy programming in Multimedia Fusion and the Games Factory is. Thanks a lot.